What up my freaks, Renaissance site here with part 4 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Eltharion the Grim High Elves melee only challenge campaign. So as we saw last time, had a lovely episode with lots of variety, facing off against a random troll doomstack, followed by the forces of corn, and then followed by more or less the destruction of the beastmen under Malagor. Uh, they're pretty much done for and we are rapidly approaching the end of this little mini challenge campaign seems that victory does appear to be very much achievable with melee only though the top knots and the exiles of corn and whoever we destroy to uh, uh, bump up our numbers with regards to the occupy loot and razor sack uh, objective and will remain to be seen I still stand in our way anyway in terms of what we got to do this time Eltharion is gonna probably start out by destroying the sunken Kernark. We also want to get those Athol Tamarha Faithbearers and Silver and Guard built now that we actually have access to them. Now, oh, actually, while we're at it, Granti Mingo, let's upgrade you to tier 3. And we're at minus 1.8k, which is a little bit steep. It'll go down to minus 800 once the Oath Gold Mine is built. Mm, you know what? Let's get rid of the Storm Riders here. Yeah. The thing is, they're a little bit too expensive. At 210 gold, they're not much better than a regular spear unit and a little bit too expensive. Frankly, we might want to get rid of the Rangers and the Illyrian Reavers here as well, as this army isn't really necessary, but for now, and just in case the Yorks come south, we'll keep them. Anyway, Altharian, you're going to... What's left here? Do we want to resolve this? We probably ought to resolve this, considering we destroyed all of the enemy here. Uh, what we'll do is, we'll kill off Mr. Malagor, because he's going to disappear anyway. Unfortunate as that may be. So execute Malagor. I do. There we go. Prisoner executed. And then we'll just uh, to resolve the sunken Kernark. Yeah, there's really not enough left to uh, bother with fighting. And yeah, even the auto resolve barely hurt us. Then we shall, let's say, temporarily occupy the territory. We'll loot and occupy. We're not going to hold on to it. And we're going to abandon it because I don't want to deal with the... Uh, uh, with the marshes here. But it's free money. Alright. Lovely. And we're up at 13k, or at least nearly so, which ain't too bad. And we should also level everybody up. Uh, hard to hit for Eltharion, as he's been getting hit quite a bit lately. And we'll save dedication to Ladriel for when we have more faith bearers up and running. Then, Henry Cavill, you... Uh, let's see, we can get another point in Spirit Leech and Shems. We could just max out the, uh, the lore minus probably Melkoths, because I still probably won't use it that much. Hmm, though I am tempted to get hard to hit on you. Uh, nonetheless, you're, you're basically the caster of this army, especially since Eltharion can't do much with his magics. And it's get hard to hit for Fenrir here, though we're probably going to replace him with a 60 influence Prince noble Elf. afterwards. Anyway, that's about all we can do. I did potentially want to switch to the Rally Citizen Militia, but that won't help us for two turns, will it? Eh... Uh, yeah, so we should... Oh, actually, it could help us for two turns. What we'll do then is uh, cancel that. We'll build two silver and guard instead. Then we will switch you immediately to Rally Citizen Militia. And that'll round it out. Oh, lovely. And since the Silver and Guardian get traded with the Spears anyway, we'll delete two Spears as well. And just so that they uh, don't cost us additional money unnecessarily, because these guys are a lot more expensive, obviously. Also, Elena, uh, before I forget, do you have... You have recruitment cost reduction. Hmm. I was hoping that you had... Let's see, Elven Scholar, Lightning Strike... Oh, you don't have anything that increases the recruit rank? Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I thought that there would be like something like Draftmaster and Renowned and Feared, but in this line, but apparently not. Alright, go for Bonded Service then, and make this a little bit cheaper. We're gonna need to Penny Pinch, at least a little bit. Like so. Alright, I want to get Altharian's army well and properly set up before we assault uh, Def Gorge as well. There's probably going to be a full stack there, and it may be a toughie. Anyway, damage building, we don't care. It's at the Sunken Kernark, so we'll skip building upgrade available. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll skip that too, and then we'll end the turn. 
All right, hopefully Eltharion can reach the uh, Cornate army here in a single bound. I guess we'll see in a second. And Volki, what you want, buddy? Military access? Yeah, sure. Why not? He's fighting Camry, which may piss off Camry, but I don't see that we can avoid it. Because they already don't like the Chevalier de Lyonnais, and we are allied with them. All right, can we in fact reach our Gruul Migdal? No. I'm gonna have to waste a turn, but what can you do? All right, go into encamp and then set up right in the middle of the enemy territory. We'll see if they stand and defend. And then we'll see if they stand and deliver. Ooh, Chaos Knights of Corn. They're gonna get a lot more threatening. And then again, so are we as we build up our army, but uh, our army is. Uh, but we'll see. Now, nobles. Let's see if we got a good one. Dynamo gives speed to the army. Hmm, that's certainly interesting. And Frugal gives camping and ammunition. Eh. I'm tempted, I would say, by Dynamo. The extra speed could certainly be valuable for a melee-only army to get into combat faster. 10% isn't really all that much, though. And it's not really going to speed up the Silver and Guard or the Athel tomorrow. Faithbearers all that much. Hmm. Although, on the other hand, the Ethel Tamara Faithbearers probably won't need it because they'll have stalked you to the dedication to Ladria. And I'll wait on that one. More importantly, we need three Faithbearers. Ah, 360 recruitment. Beautiful. Though they will be expensive to uh, field. Uh, this will give us four. And in case we have four silver and guard. I need to see what we have room for. Uh, let's see, so three of the rangers will get replaced by Ethel Tamara Faithbearers. Uh, these three will presumably be replaced by White Lines, War Lines, etc. And we currently have four Silver and Guards, so we'll need three more Silver and Guard right after. So we'll build those. Might as well build them right now. Like so. And that's it. That's all we gotta do. Fantastic. Alright. And that's another end turn, is it not? Indeed it is. Let's get to it. All right, hopefully Chant Hellcaster does not run. I do think that uh, using the uh, melee-only army is also... It does also have a, like, uh, not a secret Honor buff, but a uh, sort of a hidden advantage. And that's the fact that... Oh, Chevalier, you want to uh, trade agreement? Yeah, sure. Uh, the secret buff or secret advantage, hidden advantage, whatever. And, oh, unhappy populace, that's unfortunate. Uh, is the fact that the enemy has a tendency to underestimate your forces. Because, obviously, they're spears and uh, rangers and they're quite weak, right? So it makes sense. Uh, we can attack normal stance or we could use the bonus out of Laleth's Blessing, which I guess we'll probably want to do. Yeah, why not? Alright, we're gonna attack you. You will keep on recruiting. Alright, Pyrrhic Victory, I just want to... Oh, they have a chariot in addition to those uh, Knights of Corn. Alright, that should be interesting. And... And even more blood letters. Yeah, this uh, this is gonna take a decent amount of effort. I just want to see if these guys have been replaced. No, still Dynamo and Frugal. Mm. I may want to wait until Lore Masters anyway. And Sunken Karnark, we're going to abandon you. I don't see a need to hold on to you. And then afterwards, we'll go to the Floating Village to hopefully knock out the uh, the top knots. All right, everything else looks good. I'm just double checking for enemy armies or additional enemy armies around, but it looks like we're okay. Please. Away we go. Within the reason. Look, our units patrol the skies. Oh, wow, that, that horn was really loud. Well, uh, good job to the uh, horn bearer. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> whoever uh, uh, whoever is responsible for that. Anyway, here we go. We face up against the Cornates once more, but this time uh, they have actual the Knights of Corn in addition to everything else. So we'll see how they fare, though of course it will be Eltharion's mission to do his best to knock out as many knights and as many chariots as he possibly can and before they reach our main line. Not so much because I don't
don't think that the, uh, or rather, not so much because I think uh, that the spears and the Silveran Guard and whatnot wouldn't be able to hold, or at the very least, decently, um, but rather because of the mobility of the knights, which we very much lack in the current iteration of our army, it means that uh, they can get around our flanks and get those rear charges in, etc., etc., and just generally speaking, annoy us. Although I suppose... One of the uh, one of the nice things about the all melee army is we don't have range to actually bother protecting from our uh, uh, well from enemy charges and whatnot from enemy fast movers getting around our uh, flanks. So uh, there is that. Though I suppose at the same time we really don't want to chaos knights of corn uh, force smashing into rangers either, as is they're pretty darn fragile, so there is also that. Anyway, looks like Eltharian has thoroughly annoyed the enemy army, and they're heading towards us. We've obviously taken a, taken rather, a decent position for ourselves, and Eltharian has managed to knock out, uh, what, 16 troops from this uh, Knights of Corn unit, as well as take half of their HP for basically no cost of his own, a tiny amount of HP damage damage and I don't think he even healed himself so he's looking pretty okay at the current time in terms of the position that we've taken up and you can see some dead units here due to the summon of uh, blood letters the uh, portal opening whatever the ability is called uh, we've got all of our spears out front a couple spears guarding the flanks obviously the rangers in the center ready to move quickly quicker than the rest at least and apply themselves where needed and then over on this flank we have the silveran guard and the Athel Tamara faith bearers I actually thought that the uh, knights would charge here and thus the Silveran Guard would be more needed, but uh, we'll see if that's actually something that happens. Anyway, here comes another summoning of those uh, bloodletters, and spears are poke poking away from every direction, and at least this bloodletters. Did I say blood bearers? Whatever. Uh, close enough. Uh, this one is going to get ripped apart, no problem at all. Especially with our noble and our lore master working on him. Well done, well done. Here come the rest of the enemy army, and perhaps they should have saved the summoning for when uh, more enemy were moving in, such that they could hit our rangers in the back, which I guess they're trying to do with the doggos here. Ow, oh, look at that. That was kind of a neat maneuver, actually. So they went through this gap in our line, turned around, and rather than charging the rangers, charged the back line of the spears. Certainly going to achieve... Well, it's actually not going to achieve anything. The melee defense of the spears is way too high, and all this will do is allow the doggos to get hit in the back by the rangers. Over on this side, the Chaos Knights of Corn have arrived, towering over the spearmen. Not Silver and Guard as usual, which would be in the uh, front lines here, but, uh, well, we'll see if the spears can hold, uh, led, by, uh, led by Henry Cavill here. You gotta love Chaos Knights of Corn, though. And they would be able to obliterate our spears over time, simply a question of whether the rest of their army will hold long enough for them to do so. And because the rest of them are going to start getting surrounded now, as the enemy line engages, our rangers and our other units uh, start moving away and start enveloping any enemy units that they can get their dual, uh, dual blades on. And there we go, this unit of Bloodletters getting hit in the flanks here, and of course the Rangers are damage dealers, so they should be able to, well, maybe not mince them, but certainly dish the damage out. <laughs> Look at that, 90 melee defense on the Rangers when Stand Your Ground is up. But even without Stand Your Ground, it's pretty decent. And of course, 10 of that I believe was from Eltharian hovering overhead and applying his melee defense aura. He does have a lot of buffs in that regard. Anyway, looks like this unit of Bloodletters is pretty much done. Another unit of Rangers moving in to hit them in the back as well. And the units of Knights of Corn on the flanks, the one that was heavily damaged by Altharian himself, has been destroyed. Altharian has landed in the center of the enemy formation. It does look like at least some of our spears are taking a bit of damage. And that Altharian hunts the enemy cultist and the enemy lord. And though it won't be a very long hunt, as the enemy lord is nearly done for as well. 
Nice charge there, Stormwing. Alrighty, and the staunch line of spears continues to hold. Once again against enemies that, uh, well, we should be doing pretty poorly against. But we do once again have the terrain advantage. It's been, uh, let's say, pretty darn important in this campaign to get the uh, to get the right location to choose where we fight the enemy, rather than allowing the enemy to choose, especially due to the disadvantages that we have. Anyway, looks like most of the enemy army is getting enveloped now. Their flank has completely collapsed. The enemy lord is a dying as the cage forms around him, and while he's encaged, the uh, spirit leech hovers overhead, and Altharian explodes the enemy lord and not in a slaneshi way uh looks like the rest of the units on the flanks the chaos warriors are collapsing and the banishment begins as the blood letters begin to chain route uh, there we go suddenly just like that the entire coronate force and decides to go I'm always shocked to see Chaos Warriors of Corn running, though. I still very strongly feel like they should be probably unbreakable, or at the very least, Berserker units should be unbreakable. Especially Cornate Berserker troops. Are, ch are, are, are Cornate Chosen at least unbreakable? I feel like if you're Chosen, you would have dedicated yourself to Corn enough at that point. And honestly, Chaos Knight should definitely, or Corn should definitely be unbreakable. And I understand that this would make them too strong, and just uh, just from a loreful perspective, if nothing else. Anyway, the chase begins, but we can do it off screen, so let's see the damage. All right, very good. I didn't really need to uh, chase the enemy down, but hey, a little bit more glorious melee combat. And uh, that's never a bad thing. And out of curiosity, how'd our damage compare on the spears as opposed to the rangers? Actually, roughly the same. Uh, so, yeah, they're both performing oh, decently enough, especially as they fight against armies that, well... It's a pretty bad matchup. Plenty of blood letters with all that physical resistance on the demonic units, and the knights as well. So uh, the AI, if nothing else, is doing a decent job at uh, forming armies. Uh, that would be even better against the type of army that we have. So, yeah, well done, AI. Anyway, uh, probably won't be well done for too much longer. We also got ourselves another uh, another Cornate Prisoner. And this gives us a Ruin Shelter. Armor plus 45, melee defense plus 10, and melee attack, which ain't too bad. And, well, I guess they'll both be gone sooner rather than later, so we'll interrogate for now because we had no other interrogation form and we'll use ruin shelter when we can alrighty anything else we got to do this turn marshes of madness are being abandoned so that's just fine as we're not looking to hold territory this campaign we're just looking to win and cult of sigmar wants to trade all right we can trade with cult of sigmar uh defensive alliance a little bit iffy I don't want to get drawn into a fight. Uh, I hope that uh, they manage to win against Camry, but uh, we'll you see. And let's do that. We might Give do the defensive word. alliance. I mean, if we can't get Knights of Torgaval, as in if we never manage to tier up to uh, uh, tier 5, and it's unlikely, I should say, especially considering this costs 20k gold to build. I mean, that's pretty insane. And we have no income, effectively, because, well, we're not really building an empire, so we'll see. Maybe Demigriff Knights. And we also have some level ups once again. Oh, and get both points into dedicated to Ladra. Ah, let's just get it right now. All right. A little bit more power, but the uh, stock is very, very helpful here. All right. And, well, we might as well level up the rest of you. Hmm. Do they, they all level twice from that one battle? Hmm. 
Not bad. All right, Spirit Leech and Shem's Burning Gaze nearly maxed out. I might just max out Melkoth's as well. And then the Noble. And you, my friend, are going to go for Blade Master and no Foe Seeker as yet, but you'll get it eventually. And we'll get you a Great Eagle as well. Well, depending on if we keep you in this army, which is... I mean, you're okay. You're not great, but you're okay. Still tempted by Dynamo, but uh, for now we'll hold off. Anyway, let's end the turn and try to proceed to Floating Village. I do have to wonder whether the... Uh, uh, whether the trolls are back in numbers. Which could very well be the case. And we'll have to deal with them if they are. Ah, ah, there it is. <laughs> uh, I see three savage orcs this time, though. I wonder, would they run from us if we move towards them? Let's find out. Oh, I wonder if they were going to Sunken Kernark in the uh, hopes that it uh, uh, it wouldn't be abandoned. Certainly a possibility. All right, try to avoid your attrition there, Eltharion. We'll see if they go after you. Ah, no pile of trolls this time. I'm willing to bet they won't fight us. Seems unlikely, doesn't it? Well, either way. Alrighty, so we're going to have seven Prince units to replace Elf. seven units. Nice, nice. Alright. Everything there is fine. Collect income and... Hello. Agrul Migdal has a great eagle nest. Ah. Mmm. That's tempting. And we maybe want to build a couple of eagles. They're monsters, but I think they... I think they can't, right? They can't, right? As melee? Because they are melee monsters. I didn't want to rely on monsters so much, though. Hmm. Hard to say. As to whether it's in the spirit of the campaign. Because we, <laughs> we could just then build all monsters if we really wanted to. But anyway, I digress. Let's see Diplo. There's that uh, defensive alliance who Korn wants to peace out still. Ah, Scarby. I still think that he should physically be incapable of doing that, but, uh, well. And what do I know? Uh, you are nearly good at Rally Citizen Militia. One more turn. Let's skip, skip. Let's see what the orcs do. Scarby's gonna ask for peace now. Ooh, that must, uh... Uh, that must rankle. Alright, and Glugzag, you are the one to watch. Where are you gonna go? Who are you gonna call? I don't know where he was. Ah, there he is. And uh, he's going to try to go for Agrul Migdal. I'm going to bet he'll run, causing us attrition, but it might be worth it. Uh, as long as we head this way, because we'll have to go to Floating Village anyway. Uh, recruit plus two for Illyrian Reavers and Silverhelms. Fine. Not super relevant to us, but fine. And there's basically nothing else useful here that we can research, at least not in the... Uh, uh, not in this one. I guess Naval Discipline, just in case we get Lothar and Seaguard and Garrisons, could maybe be somewhat be useful. Done. Anyway, Elena, we need you to move. And you're going to suffer attrition. Oh, it's actually not attrition -y here. Okay, fine. You're going to go here. And we're going to try to chase Eltharian down. Then we're going to swap to rebuild Lost Splendor. Like so. Can I offer assistance? For the growth, Eltharian, you're going to try to go after Mash, who will run, but hopefully we can chase him down, or... No, he will He will fight. All right, well, it looks like it's going to be a straight-up combat versus piles of savage orcs. Not a little bit of trolls, but still fun enough to battle. This is a battle-heavy mini-campaign after all, so here we go again. Alrighty, huh. You know, I don't remember this particular cavern. That's a lot of uh, roots or moss or whatever growing down uh, from our scene from above. And now uh, the sky is open. I guess this is in one of the more orky underway areas. There's lots of, uh, huh, well, there's a lot of trees and shrubs in here. I was going to say a lot of fungus, but uh, yeah, it's not fungus, but I do see orc settlements and stuff. So yeah, kind of orky. So kind of like this one. And I certainly don't remember it. Anyway, here we go. The orcs of the uh, Topknots. And they are going to probably be destroyed. 
I would like to say without too much trouble, but we have to remember that this is once again the Asude Wonderway battle, and thus we cannot get around the flanks of the enemy. The most damage we've taken so far in the entire campaign in a single battle has been in one of these underway non-interception battles. So uh, can't uh, can't forget the fact that it's very important to get to rear charges and uh, flanking attacks when you're all melee. So we'll see how this goes. On top of that, this may be the very last battle that we ever see spears and rangers. At least in Eltharian zone. As Elena closes by, or closes in or rather, we will be able to replace uh, the uh, these units with their more elite counterparts very shortly and thus no more top knots uh, to contend with that will uh, uh, that will remotely threaten our army as if this was a line of silver and guard that would have no problem at all anyway trolls charging in getting some air on a few of our elven spears though not a lot of them looks like only three or four went flying and though those clubs bonk bonk in a way at the front line you can still see the uh, shock waves and the splash damage from those trolls you gotta have a healthy respect for them. On the bright side though, it looks like the enemy has engaged and has in fact left a lane open on the right side of the battlefield, allowing our Athel Tamarha Faithbearers, as well as those Rangers, to move around and start uh, and start moving towards the Savage Orc Error Boys and the back line of the enemy. We are taking a little bit of damage on a few units, but it looks like the enemy's leadership is uh, uh, well, leaves something to be desired and as long as we can hit start hitting the enemy in the back with our rangers we should be okay Alrighty, these rangers, however, taking a few hits to the front from the Savage Orcs and the Trolls definitely have to be careful with regards to that, as obviously their fragility means they will start losing models extremely quickly. Uh, looks like this rightmost flank has been, if not completely enveloped, uh, hit in the back and the flanks. And they're having a pretty bad day. Stormwing's having fun getting some air on the... <laughs> again, some air on those orcs in revenge for our own flying spears. Now, the battle is hardly over, but the enemy line has completely lost its cohesion. Yeah, there's still some fighters left on this uh, left on this flank, and we can still see units getting damaged, but with the main enemy line having collapsed, the range units will be destroyed. They can fire no more, certainly, and as soon as we chase down or damage heavily these guys, we'll be able to hit the holdout left flank without too much trouble. It looks like the trolls have rallied, but Eltharian has sighted them and countercharged them, and should be knocking down trolls as well as forcing them to rout fairly quickly. And they should, there we go, nice job, killing two trolls with one blow, and the trolls are broken, the balance of power is at about 90% in our favor, and I think it's about to climb to 100. And just this holdout flank left, and I think they are about to turn... Who's still fighting? No, nobody's still fighting. There we go. Chain route is here. Relatively short battle uh, this time around, but uh, hardly surprising. We do have a little bit of chasing to do, but unfortunately a decent amount of this army will survive because of that problem I've pointed out before, where they could just walk off right beside where they were fighting. Damn these non-interception underway battles. I do feel like they should have made it so that escape from non-interception underway battles can only be... I don't know maybe at the front and back of the uh, of the map and maybe in the middle as well but certainly not in every single side like this as well it's a little bit much but anyway uh not important the rest of the chase will be off screen All right, that one was easy enough for our purposes. We're going to heal up two mechs because we're going to suffer attrition either way. They're going to back it up, but we'll hopefully be able to chase them down. Hello, Keepers of the Flame Phoenix Guard. I... hmm. 
I was not expecting to get these guys right now. The Everqueen Quartz Guard's not so useful uh, by comparison. What do we still have left? Uh, the Fireborn Dragon Princes. Oh, wait. Uh, 65. Is that 65 without? One second. You're at 30. Ah, okay. So they have 35 plus the 30% that we have off of our item. Still, not bad. Uh, nearly immune to fire. And then the Omen of Assyrian Arcane Phoenix. Maybe I'll make an exception and put the Arcane Phoenix in if we, uh, if we reach a rank 30, though. It's pretty much guaranteed that we will. Anyway, we do want the Phoenix Guard. That's for damn certain. They are melee after all. And also, I just realized there is no Regiment of Renown uh, Lore Masters of Hoeth. That's a little bit disappointing. Hmm. But what can you do? Anyway, uh, we'll replace the spear next turn. Yes. Uh, next turn so we don't suffer the uh, additional cost over this one turn. Alrighty, and I believe that's all we can do this time around. So once again, we're going to end turn and... Mm, I'm going to upgrade you just to be able to build white lines and turn. Let's see about destroying that floating village, shall we? See how many turns it takes us to reach it as well. Hopefully this guy tries to jump or underway stance and then gets intercepted. And ooh, I think Cult of Sigmar are losing. I just saw their balance of power and it looked pretty darn low. Ah, damn, he did succeed. Oh well. Attrition for Altharian, but that's hardly surprising. Uh, hmm. We may want to cross the water regardless of the, of the attrition we take here. Oh, wait, there's a tiny area where we won't take attrition. Fantastic, go there. We won't heal up either, but oh, I forgot that we needed the uh, the regiment of renown. Ah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We'll get uh, you, Elena, to get the regiment of renown for us. You won't be able to follow into the water. I'm gonna have to continue following Altharian. Now. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll go right here, and then we'll recruit the regiment of renown. Still losing a ton of money per turn, so we'll still have to be careful. And recruit the keepers of the flame. We'll recruit these two as well, but not right now. Uh, gotta have to be careful about the cash. Right, like so, and then you're gonna cross to the floating village next turn. Or maybe I should have sent you around this way, but it, uh, it won't make much of a difference either way. Uh, then we'll want to upgrade the royal garrison here with the rebuild of splendor. Ugh, the money. I was actually going to build the war hall here. You know what? I think temporarily. Damn, the harbor is expensive. I think temporarily we'll want to build the uh, and the elven craftsmen. Although they're also not uh, not super cheap, or at least not as cheap as I'd like. Hmm. The thing is, this is obviously a tier three. Hmm. Wait one second. Uh, yeah, we could build a proper mage if we wanted to. If we were to replace you. But the question is, can we afford it? Also, we can upgrade Stormhenge at 4.5k. Oh, I don't think we can afford it right now. You know what? Don't build anything yet. Maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have built those units. Hmm. No, either way. Oh, I didn't realize he went this way. Oh, my bad. I'll go Migdal. You're done. <laughs> I thought he jumped uh, northward instead of southward. All right. Well, Elena, you're gonna have to retake it. Whoops. Uh, definitely a mistake on my part, uh, but what can you do? Anyway, let's skip the rest of this end turn. He's going to attack Agrul Migdo, we'll let him auto-resolve it, and then we'll reclaim it. Hmm, and it'll probably cause a rebellion as well, but I guess the faction will be dead shortly, so it's not going to make that much of a difference. At least, uh, I hope. Yeah, 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 don't bother fighting that. And... well, so much for the White Lions, I guess. Scabby Eyes, Scourge of Cain, hey, Greybeard's Prospectors destroyed that as always. A happy announcement, the happiest of announcements. Uh, you... are gonna go right... wait. Can you actually reach this from here? Yeah, let's not risk it. Uh, just go here. Watch this guy run to Gorgazan now. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, but I would be annoyed. Alrighty, uh, you to the floating village, please. And what do we have in terms of... Okay, probably not worth fighting, right? This is just essentially a weaker version of the army that we just fought. 
I'm more interested in fighting Scar Grinder and a tier four Death Gorge by the time we get there, most likely. Uh, is there anything we can do with either one of these? I mean, we could fight you, capture you. Ah, uh, yeah, but we'd have to manually fight that then. Hmm. I'm I'm genuinely annoyed at myself for this though. I really hope that we don't have to spend a year chasing you around. And, well, this place wasn't generating income anyway, so that is not an issue. Well, Vengeance not much of an issue, I should say. Do we fight you for the little bit of extra XP? I mean, the problem is we'd have to execute you, which would mean the interrogation would disappear. Or we could execute Scarbrand, but, well, we captured him for a reason. Hmm. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Let's just do this. If we're gonna spend time chasing, then I'd rather, uh, I'd rather not. Let's loot and occupy for the extra cash, and we will then collect income, or non-collect income. We'll abandon the place, and then we'll head southward. Not actually to Def Gorge, but back to meet up with Elena and swap our units around. Also, while we're at it, though we don't technically have the money, I just wanted to see whether these guys have been replaced, but alas, and they have not. Okay. Well, a little bit better money-wise now. Maybe we can build you, Elven Craftsman. Or, you know what? No. We're going. To, we're still gonna go for the uh, Militia Camp. For the Silver and Guard. Even though I would love to get the Craftsman in there. And Stormhenge, theoretically we want to upgrade you to get the Garrison up and running, but damn, you're expensive. Ay. Okay, what can you do? Oh, we can always cancel it if, uh, if push comes to shove. Skip, 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 and turn. And let's see what Giblet does. Alright, where are you gonna go? Are you gonna go anywhere? This is technically your last settlement now. <laughs> you want a piece, uh, that's cute. It's not gonna happen, though. And no, you're not gonna run. Good. Alrighty, so Altharian, I would like you to cross the water. Attrition-y though you might be. I, I doubt that corn is going to attack you. And then we're going to abandon... Uh, make 300 money per turn. You know what? Do this, collect the income for a few turns, and then we'll abandon it after. Actually, no, we'll destroy, demolish the building for money, and then we'll abandon it. Yes. Okay, Elena. Briefly, take Agrul Migdal. Probably not worth the fight. Yes, yeah, it's not worth the fight. Gonna kill off a Rav's gonna delete this ranger anyway, it's fine. Alright, we'll do that. We'll occupy rather than loot and occupy. Alright, there we go. There was really no need to fight those battles when they've already been fought and are very easy. Alrighty, Akril Migdal, now you have the Elven Craftsman, funnily enough. Uh, but we need to... Well, actually, collect the income. Counterbalance the horrific money situation we're in right now. And you are going to upgrade your rally field. In fact, we'll delete you right now. Alright, good enough. Good enough for now. Also, when is the Invocation of Syrian back up? Eight turns. Uh, well, if we need to build something expensive, that's when we'll do it. Alrighty, skip, 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 skip. Diplomacy. Uh, let's see if there's anything is available. No, nothing's available. And just out of curiosity. Yeah, it seems Camry has beaten the Cult of Sigmar. They're not gonna like that. Oh well. And turn. All right, finally, Altharian's gonna get his not complete army, but a stronger army at least. Ah, the route. I I just really don't want to end the campaign with nothing but rangers and spears. Just gotta get something a little bit stronger for the rest of it. All righty, and research eight technologies is completed. Van braces of defense. Ooh, Altharian just got significantly stronger. And sacred incense, missile resistance buff for everybody. Fantastic. Uh, yes. Some very nice item rewards. Also, I'm aware that we have the quest battle, but I think I'm going to save it for the final battle of the campaign after we uh, manage to complete the... Uh, uh, after we manage to complete the campaign... Eh, just build this. doesn't really matter. Objectives. Although, wait, what does the Amulet of Hoeth actually do? Talisman of Hoeth, whatever. Uh, it... Gives us the Hand of Glory upgrade and otherwise enables advanced high magic. What do you mean by enables advanced high magic? Do we not have advanced? We can get this anyway, but it's not like we want it anyway, so... 
it's all not super relevant. Uh, okay, so what we'll do now is get Blade Master for you, sir, and then into Foe Seeker right after. Then we will pop you into Encamp Stance, and we will do this. Right here at the edge of the territory, and we are going to Death Gorge soon after all. And okay, just gotta double check our borders. Now we're okay. Oh my lord, what the heck happened here? Huh, Disciples of the Maw. Okay, it looks like we'll be fighting some ogres. Not necessarily because we have to fight the ogres, rather because we'll still need another uh, decent pile of uh, settlements we need to raise, sack, loot, etc. Alright, trade some units, would you? Alright, like so. Then, the units that we will want to trade. Elena, all of you. Swap out the spears. Uh, swap out three rangers for the Athol uh, Tamara faith bearers. And this leaves us 21. We need two points or two spaces. One for the white lions and then one for the war lions. Meaning that's the rest of the rangers gone. Well, fare thee well, rangers. You served us well, but uh, we'll be going on without you. All right. Like so. And then we will build the Pure Main Company and the Rahagra's Pride right after. Elena, uh, you cannot move, but you will return to Agrul Migdal. Briefly. And I guess we are keeping this territory, so we probably will want to upgrade it, although we'll have to hold on to the cash for now. Uh, we will also want to build a U. Both for the ability to build lore masters and a mage. I would like a high mage. Or possibly even... Do we have access to lore of beasts? Yeah, we do. Uh, this is wild form, pan's impenetrable pelt, curse of anarchy. It's all good for melee fighters as well. Hmm. It's really tempting. If only it wasn't so expensive. We can't afford it right now anyway, but we will be able to shortly. Alrighty, before this guy goes for Floating Village, I would like to now demolish this building. Because we're going to attack the Death Gorge and destroy Scarby's faction next turn. We should probably also delete some of this stuff. Well, you know what? We should have an army getting ready to defend Granti Mingle or somewhere, because I have a feeling that the Ogres are going to attack us. Oh, they are fighting the Crooked Moon, though. I have never, ever seen Scrag get this strong. I guess it's since we destroyed the Bloody Hands, they were able to destroy the minor faction that was occupying these territories. But hey, at least it'll give us something to fight. Anyway, uh, we will... You know what, now delete this, because we're going to need to spend whatever money we need to uh, get the other units. Skip, 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 and presuming no diplomacy, and I doubt it, we'll end the turn. We should also probably not aggress with Camry. We need somebody at our borders to the south, essentially. I'd also love some uh, reductions in campaign, or not campaign, in unit upkeep for Altharian's army, because it's just got a lot more expensive. My and grows. the heck are you doing, man? Okay, you're kind of in the way. Uh, Fenrir has... Wait, 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 wait. You're on the eagle, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. For a second I thought he was on the chariot and uh, was uh, not going to do that. Anyway, obviously before we fight we'll get the Vambraces of Defense, much stronger Otharian. Then, uh, let's do the Scroll of Blast, Scroll of Power Fuse into... Huh. Well, that's great for a mage. Physical resistance 50% at the cost of weapon strength. Uh, but uh, not super useful for us right now. We'll take out the Berserker Sword and the Phobane and... Mm, or the Shrieking Blade. Eh, you too. And this will give us the White Sword, which honestly isn't all that much better. Uh, but what can you do? And obviously these two are fine. Alright, uh, the Potion of Strength should probably be kept on. Yeah, we're definitely not giving you Philoriath's robe. And we will, however, equip the other two. Alright, so the White Sword can go to... Hmm. Wait, so Lore Masters automatically have magic... No, they don't have magic attacks. Which is surprising. You would think that they did, but anyway, I guess you can keep the Shrieking Blade. We will give you the Sacred Incense to buff everybody near you. And we don't have any armors, unfortunately, so none for you. You, Fenrir, will have the Dawnstone and I guess the White Sword and not Philoriath's Robe. I'll turn it into something else later. I'm tempted to try to fuse Scroll of Stone and Scroll of Aramar, but... 
Scroll of Verimar isn't bad, especially against the lords and demons. But Scroll of Stone is useless to us in this particular campaign, which is the issue. But anyway, not a concern right now. Uh, we are going to go for Pure Main Company and Rahagra's Pride. Oh, like so. All right, very nice. And now we're losing 2k per turn. Okay, well, obviously this is no longer sustainable. So, you are heading to Agrul Migdal to stand there. You are going to get abandoned. And then we'll need to delete... I hesitate to delete Rangers, mostly because... I don't know, we'll need some damage dealers if we have to hold. But at the same time... You know, delete two spears, maybe. We can always rebuild them. I think, in fact, we can build them at rank... Three or something. Protective. Yeah, that's still not enough. And this is with the income being collected. Mm. We obviously won't go bankrupt because defeating the army at Death Gorge will give us sufficient money, but. Eh, let's see if we can hold for a turn. Uh, you, maybe we'll attack you for the money, if nothing else. Just quick little auto resolve and then we'll attack at Death Gorge right after. Uh. Let's face it, these guys are going to annoy us if we don't kill them right now. Is this the main... Sush the Soul Render? Yeah, okay. I just wanted to double check whether this was the main army. Kill this. They cannot live. He just spawned in... Oh! Oh. Damn, I was going <laughs> to... I was hoping that he'd go right beside the... Uh, uh, the coronates and then we'd be able to fight them both, but no. Uh, I'll resolve this. Let's hope it doesn't do too much damage. And more damage than I'd like, to be honest. Hmm. All right, fine. Ransom the captives for the money, and then go into encamp, and then we'll uh, we'll heal up for a turn, and then we'll attack Def Gorge next turn. Not a big deal. Ah, free talisman of Loek. Melee attack plus twenty four, and base weapon damage plus thirty percent for sixty seven seconds for quite a while. Uh, huh. Wait. Just to make a quick comparison here, the Potion of Strength is 50% and 50% for 33 seconds, versus 30% and 24 melee attack. Nah, the Potion of Strength might still be better. Alright, fine, we'll give this to you. And while we're at it, let's double check whether we got a better uh, and better noble. Still Frugal and Dynamo. Yeah, well, we can't be spending influence on that. I mm. serve the Phoenix King. Alrighty. Uh, let's end the turn, get a little bit more cash after we double-check Diplomacy again. Yes. Uh, no, it looks like there is nothing. And obviously we could pay Camry for the uh, non-aggression pact. But they're, let's say, not unhappy with us. And you... Hmm. You're happy with us for going after Def Gorge or for going after Corn in general. Alright, that's fine then. End turn. End turn and to Def Gorge we go. And ooh... That is both great and a big mistake on your part there, Scarby. What you want? You want military access. Uh... I wonder if you're gonna survive. Yeah, sure. Get a little bit in the way of friendliness with them. I'm honestly not that interested in fighting early game Tomb Kings, because they're hilariously easy to kill. They just have lots of armies. Alright, this looks like it's going to be a pretty great field battle. Let's level up before we go, and then we go. Uh, foe Seeker for Eltharian for this. Uh, nothing else here is going to be all that useful for us, right? We don't have Rangers anymore, so Silver Torrent is of no use. Heart of the Flame will be of use only to the Phoenix Guard and the Fireborn. Once we have them, then we'll have to figure out who to replace. Huh, I'll probably have to be one of the Silverian Guard, but that's just fine. And then you two. The minions, you get levels as well. You know what, let's just mel max out Melkoths. Now we can make you a fighter. And then the noble... Ooh, hello. Knowledge of Lizardman Affairs. Ah, we still have to get replenished troops. Uh, knowledge of High Elf Affairs. Income from ports. Honestly, usually this matters a lot, but in this particular... Uh, in this particular situation, it doesn't really matter all that much. I think we're probably better off just trying to get to Deadly Onslaught as fast as possible. I could also just build a noble to go after influence, but you know what? This being a mini-campaign, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, let's go to Layeth's Blessing. 
And let's see how many we can fight here with our new army. There we go, Pyrrhic victory. They have more than a full stack, plenty of blood letters and exalted blood letters as well. And we got uh, Chaos Warriors of Corn. One, two, three, four, five uh, lords and heroes. And but we have our better army as well. Uh, let's see how we do. Alrighty, it must be done, and it must be done in style, as the High Elven Elite have joined us, our, uh, our Keepers of the Flame, Phoenix Guard, which look pretty darn nice. I love the, uh, uh, I love uh, the cloaks, and yeah, they look pretty good. And of course, the Pure Main Company as well. Two units with some nice armor piercing and armor sundering as well on the Pure Main Company. Ooh, and these guys are appropriately bloody looking with their, uh, with their reddish color scheme. Very, very nice. Hmm, wait, is there any main elven faction that has like a completely red color scheme like this? Because that would be swell. It would have been more appropriate for this particular battle. It's almost as if the uh, Cornate Skies welcome the uh, welcome the Pure Main Company. Anyway, in addition to them, uh, we have our unit of Rahagra's Pride, the War Lines, uh, which I've been wanting since basically the very start of the uh, uh, of the campaign, if nothing else, to chase the enemy down. Plus, oh, look at them, they're so cute. You get pets. Also... You get pets. I'll pet the rest later off screen. And of course, our noble is on an eagle now as well, so he can move in with Altharian when needed. Altharian's gonna head directly towards the enemy lord here and start off on him, whereas the noble is gonna move around and get ready to help. Not that I think Altharian needs help with this, it's just that we need to kill off this particular enemy lord before the, uh, before the main host arrives. We don't need any distractions. Speaking of distractions, however, a chaos portal opens up and disgorges its blood letters onto the battlefield, trying to uh, call for reinforcements, Mr. Enemy Lord, but it ain't gonna help out all that much. And we do have a decent amount of splash here. There we go, knock them away, Stormwing, so that Altharian can get set his uh, target. Alrighty, that Chaos Lord is down to nearly half HP there. We are going to back away with Rahagra's Pride, as we don't want them to get surrounded by the Blood Letters, but it looks like the uh, Blood Letters will be out of here fairly quickly as well. And the debuff leadership reduction from Rahagra's Pride is also quite helpful, so it's nice to have its special ability. Anyway, it looks like the enemy Lord has wavered, so now it's just a matter of forcing uh, the enemy Blood Letters into banishment. And there it is. And here come the lions charging right back in. I've been waiting to see you. All right, very nice, very nice. I'd love to see them face off against some flush hounds as well, but, uh, well, unless we find some, it's unlike... Oh, very, wow, a single one of these lions have enough mass to knock down one of the lords? Huh, kind of surprising. A bit pleasantly so. Anyway, these three units shall have no problem chasing off the enemy lord. Um, but here come the reinforcements, wherein the real fight will begin. Uh, so, in terms of the setup that we have here, we're keeping the Keepers of the Flame and the Pure Main Company, our two newly acquired super elites. Well, I guess super elites is only the uh, Keepers of the Flame. The White Lions are tier 3, though, at least. I'm actually surprised that Silver and Guard are only tier 2, because Spears are also tier 2, and there's a... Uh, I mean, they're just a literal upgrade to Spears, so I don't really see how they're the same tier. But anyway, I digress. Uh, these two are waiting in the back to be applied wherever it is we need to apply them. A main line of Silver and Guard is up front, with the uh, Scions of Mathline in the center providing their battle banner, as well as their aura of protection to... Uh, uh, to whoever we need to apply this to. And then... 
We have a couple of addition, so additional Silverian Guard all the way in the bag, getting ready for the massive pile of chariots that the enemy has brought. Four chariots of corn. So that's going to definitely be concerning. And then lastly, the rangers may be gone, but the Athel Tamarha Faithbearers rather have taken their place. And they will, uh, by virtue of their stock, be able to get around the enemy formations and then hit them in the back, which is essentially what we wanted to use the rangers for. Uh, but uh, at the very least, the enemy could see the rangers taking action, whereas not so much for the uh, uh, for the mist stalkers. All right, looks like the enemy also had a single unit of Furies up in the sky, but they will fly no longer. Damn, that unit went down quick, but, uh, well, Stormwing likes to establish its dominance over the Furies quickly. And trying to move the rest of our units back to the main formation. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit as we wait for the enemy to arrive. And not going to intercept some of those chariots with Eltharion and the Noble, though. It is nice that we got the uh, Noble on an Eagle now. Generally nice for Altharian to potentially have somebody to uh, be able to quickly move somewhere with him, rather than, well, potentially waiting forever to get access to the uh, Knights of Torgaval. Because, uh, well, I wish they didn't need Tier 5, but it is what it is. Or do they need Tier 4? I'll double check. Tier 4 is a lot more manageable. Tier 5 is just crazy. Oh, look at the eagle, just <laughs> a waddle forward. They're kind of adorable when they walk on the ground. Alrighty, and we're still trying to catch those chariots. Not doing anything crazy to them, but damaging them a little bit. But it's time for them to charge directly at our Silver and Guard and get stopped completely in their tracks. It looks like they did not have enough, uh, uh, enough of a lead-up time. There we go. A little bit better on you. And they didn't quite get enough speed in order to be able to bowl our units over and directly charge through the spears, which is appropriate. And a trying again, a few more get knocked over, but they're not charging through, which means they will have a pretty bad time. All of these anti-large silver and guard with their 74 melee defense and 49 melee attack. That ain't too bad either. Plus they're a lot more heavily armored than those spears were. Alrighty, and here come our... Oh, damn. <laughs> I was about to say, here come our Keepers of the Flame. Phoenix Guard, at least, trying to help out in here. And there's Eltharian moving in as well. It looks like the enemy decided that it wanted to commit all of its chariots before the rest of the army got here, which seems like a pretty bad idea, as the Lions and the Phoenix Guard and the Silver... or Silverian Guard are able to destroy most of the chariots before they can achieve too much. Beautiful. Alrighty, and if it isn't the enemy lord, you're the enemy lord, right? A herald of corn was going to get engaged a little bit, but uh, the rest of the army is nearly here, so we want to be careful. Ah, look at the enemy's little warband here. Cultists of corn moving in. Fighting together, and oh, I like how they have... Uh, I like how they have different armor. This one has uh, two shoulder armor pieces, and this one only has the one. At least some variance in that regard. Alrighty, well, it's going to take some time to kill them off, especially with chariots helping out, or at the very least, it would if it was only Silver and Guard here, but here come the Pure Main Company to reduce their armor and to hopefully heavily damage them. And the enemy army continues to move in, but we have elites, and thus we, I think, still have the advantage, both uh, uh, both on the map and according to the uh, balance of power. Still looking pretty good. Still a chariot able to move, and ooh, we do have to be careful about the exalted blood letters. These guys hit damn hard and pierce the armor, so uh, they're going to be a threat even to our keepers of the flame. The same cannot, however, be said of the enemy lord as Eltharion rips the Herald of Corn apart and makes him disappear. I lost track of him for a sec, and oh, actually, uh, that was Fenrir. Well done, Fenrir. 
I thought it was Eltharian for a second because I saw wings, but, uh, well, you did good too. Eltharian's busy working on the two enemy cultists at the same time, though it looks like the enemy is actually down to one. The battle is far from over, however, as the main enemy line has arrived and gotten engaged with our Silveran main line, of course, bolstered by those Keepers of the Flame. And we also have our lines in the background chasing off every single chariot and destroying them in the hopes that they don't come back next round or next battle because obviously it's unlikely that we'll be able to destroy them all but uh, well the more we kill the less likely we'll have to deal with them again oh, I love seeing the exalted uh, blood letters fight as well and it's spears versus those uh, flaming great swords Alrighty, got a uh, got a couple buffs going, apotheosis to heal up, and whenever we can, stand your ground from Altharian to give an extra bit of melee defense, plus the continuous earth floods going as well. Ah, isn't it nice to see the high elves fight properly? Although the Pure Main Company, they uh, they definitely match the uh, the Cornate units. If anybody is going to uh, uh, if anybody is going to fall to corn, it's probably these guys. And just judging by color scheme alone, though in reality the, the white lines are probably least likely to fall to corn. At least one of the least likely. In between them and Phoenix Guard, probably. Anyway, it looks like the uh, Pure Main Company is absolutely wrecking face here as these Chaos Warriors of Corn and get uh, ripped apart. The Athel Tamara Faithbearers are in there as well, and they aren't having too much trouble with them either. They are sufficiently heavily armored, and it looks like they're doing pretty good, even if their melee defense is considerably lower than that of the Silveran Guard. And uh, that's just fine. We do have more Athel Tamara Faithbearers moving in and they also do have that ruin shelter buff uh, that they can pop for a massive increase in uh, various stats as soon as they enter the fray which is great it's actually too bad we can't keep these these buffs but i guess it would be too op if we could you know keep whichever buff we want forever i mean actually there is a way that you can keep a whichever buff you want forever you can uh, you can get an army to permanently besiege an enemy settlement, essentially, and just periodically sack it or whatever. And you can even farm enemies to cage up that way as well. But uh, we're not doing uh, we're not doing cheesy tactics. Alrighty, well, we don't need cheesy tactics to defeat the Coronate units, and at least in this battle or any battle, as this will probably be their last, as the enemy army finally breaks. Well done to the elites and just judging by the amount of HP we've lost, we did pretty darn well. I mean, obviously this was a massive, massive upgrade going from Spears and Rangers to Silveran Guard, uh, Mistwalkers and other elite units. So it's a whole new army. And we also got to remember that uh, damage doesn't also necessarily mean units are dead. So these guys will heal up nicely as well. As for the chase, once again, we'll do it off screen. Alrighty, very, very nice. And the battles, despite the fact that the enemy had plenty more units that are very good against us, like the Exalted Bloodletters, still felt a lot easier, because now we have our uh, super elites, the Keepers of the Flames, stood pretty much in the center of the uh, uh, the battlefield. The Pure Main Company added that lovely armor piercing, and I'd like to get at least one more unit of white lines just to match them. Uh, then we had the Apple Tamara Faith Bearers, one of which got nine... And uh, 9,000 damage and 100 kills, beating everybody with the exception of Altharian himself. So great job to them. And despite the fact that they stood out of the battle for a lot of the time, uh, making good use of their stock ability. Uh, we have uh, basically nothing from Ransom Captives, so we'll go for Force Labor. Then... 
I guess what I should have done was... Ah, Omen of Asturian's up and running now. And the Fireborn Dragon Princes as well. And we should probably get those in there. Just, you know, when we have a little bit more money. Uh, then, because they're going to be gone, we will have to execute Scarbrand and his friend here, who I should have executed prior to that battle, but whatever, not a big deal. Uh, execute. Death and actually, I just wanted to see deserved. here. Demon Prisoner... Execute a prisoner plus eight per turn. So if we execute Scarbrand on the same turn, like so. Better safe than Huh. It doesn't stack up to two turns. Oh, that's unfortunate, really. It's the <laughs> this has been around since the Total Warhammer right, 2 right. game. Come on now. Alrighty, well with that, uh, Scarbrand's faction is done. We're gonna occupy the place and exile the corn and destroyed, which means all the destroy the faction objectives have completed. Uh, we just now have to upgrade Ethel Tamara five times and then occupy Loot Razor Sack, a bunch of settlements, which will probably be the uh, ogre settlements as we head up northward. We can also do the Skaven. Mm, doesn't really matter. Either way. Either way, the campaign is getting closer. Hopefully by the time we uh, reach the uh, uh, the end, we'll at least be able to unlock a few more units, like some lore masters. But we're already looking pretty good with the types of unique units and stuff we have. Either way, I think this is probably going to be the appropriate place to call this particular episode. Hopefully next time, as we move northward, we might encounter Scrag himself. Himself, or I would imagine that there's probably a full stack out here uh, to be contending with. So we'll start working on the ogres. So stay tuned for more glorious melee combat. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.